Hey everyone, it's Dr. Charlotte Hodges, and I had a quick little thing I want to talk to you guys about today. Um, I've had a couple of revision um, patients come in for initial consultation, and as we're going through their medical history and their surgical history, they really are frustrated because they've had a previous surgery, and, um, and now they need a revision. Or... I've had some folks come in and they want, you know, they've never had surgery before, but they are concerned because they know someone that's had a previous bariatric surgery and they ended up having a bunch of weight regain. And so what are the things that I need to do as a surgeon to give my patients, number one, the confidence that this will be a good, this is a good choice for them to either undergo bariatric surgery to begin with or you've had a previous surgery, and for whatever reason, um, you now need to have a revision, how do we make sure that um, we d history doesn't repeat itself? And um, I think the first thing we need to talk about is, what is the risk for revision? You know, I think it's interesting, and we've spoken about this at several different conferences, that, you know, in, um, orthopedic surgery, like if you're getting a new hip or a new knee, they have a stated time period where, whoop, my little thing just moved. They have a stated time period where your, um, like how long your knee will last, how long your knee replacement's gonna last 10, 15 years. So there is a stated known um, lifespan of that particular procedure. Unfortunately, right now we don't have enough data so that we, we can make those generalizations for bariatric surgery yet. However, what we can do is discuss what is the risk for some weight regain, not necessarily just failure of the surgery. And um, what I have found in my practice is if you have a previous band, you have about a 50% chance of needing to have that band removed within five years of it being replaced. Um, probably not gonna have a lot of really good long-term um, weight loss with the lap band procedure. Um, with a sleeve and with a gastric bypass, we're finding that there's a risk of weight regain, um, of re regaining about 10 to 15% of the weight that you lost. And it's also not uncommon around the 24 month mark, maybe even a little bit sooner, for your appetite to kind of go back to normal. And so what does this, what does all this mean? Because with a duodenal switch, there is um, less than 5% chance of you having any weight regain. So how does this affect you practically? Number one, the first thing you need to know is there is not any silver bullet. Losing weight is not easy. Whether you do it with surgery or whether you do it with medical weight loss, there is a process and it's not gonna happen overnight, which I also tell folks, you didn't gain your weight overnight, it's not gonna go away overnight. So I think the first thing that we need to do is have a shift in our mindset because number one, it is not a, it's not a magic bullet. Number two, there are things that surgeons can do to contribute to patients' weight regain. And then there are things that as a patient, some behaviors that can happen that if both of those things are happening at the same time, then that's a recipe for disaster. So what do I mean? Um, from a surgeon standpoint, because I do a lot of revision surgery, it's not uncommon for me, um, like if I'm doing um, a sleeve revision, I can definitely tell you not all sleeves are created the same. Everybody has um, varying widths that they like to make their sleeve. Some people leave some extra tissue over the, um, at the top part of the sleeve. And some of that is um, because if you're going to develop a leak, it's generally at the top part of the sleeve. It's kind of due to back pressure. So that idea is if you have a little extra tissue, then the risk for that stapling being under tension because of pressure, that risk will go down. Um, in my practice, I don't like to do that because a sleeve is a purely restrictive procedure we're trying to give you a small space. That way your risk for weight regain um, is lower. But I've definitely seen um, sleeves of all shapes and sizes. So from a surgeon standpoint, I can certainly tell you that if your surgeon gives you a big sleeve, your chance of losing 
a significant amount of weight is going to go down the larger the sleeve that, um, that they make. Um, also, if it's kind of abnormally created, um, that too can predispose you to being able to eat more. Um, that's on the surgeon side. The other thing on the surgeon side is making sure that you have good resources for your patient after surgery. It's a two-step process. Step one, getting a good surgery that is appropriate to your BMI. And then step two is making sure you have good follow-up. So what do I mean by a surgery that's appropriate for your BMI? The reality is, is that once you have a BMI over 35, you're a good candidate for any one of the surgeries that we do. Sleeve, bypass, do it in a switch. There's a misconception that you cannot or should not have a gastric bypass or do a deal switch unless you're like on my 600 pound life and that is false i will have a lot of patients that will come to see me their bmi is well over 50 and the only thing that they want is a sleeve which is okay um you i always have to marry the medical information with my patient's comfort level but i will tell them that even if you lose the 65% of excess body weight, so basically if the sleeve does everything it's supposed to, you will still be morbidly obese, you will still have a BMI well over 35, even if you get an appropriate slide sleeve. And so that's what I mean by making sure you get a good appropriate surgery because the more aggressive the surgery, the more weight you lose, the more weight you're able to keep off. And so I think from an anatomic standpoint, making sure that you have a properly sized sleeve, as well as having good long-term uh, follow-up, as well as appropriately selecting a procedure that's gonna get you to the weight that you want, those are all things that surgeons um, need to um, be providing their patients. I think also um, when I'll have patients that have undergone um, previous gastric bypass, and if it was done in the early 2000s in particular, a lot of times the stomach patch is bigger than how we make it now, or that small bowel rearrangement is not as significant as we do now. And again, that also is not going to allow patients to lose as much weight or keep that weight off um, like we do now. So anatomy, um, correct surgery choice, and follow-up. Those are all things that the surgeon has control over that can have a significant impact on your long-term outcome. Now. What about the patients? Behavior and your metabolism play a huge role. Most of us really can't do a whole lot with our metabolism. Um, usually to increase your metabolism, you need to be doing a lot of hip training. You need to have more lean muscle mass. Let's face it, if you have bad knees and bad hip, it's gonna be hard to, for you to do a lot of hip training. So our genetics do play um, a profound role in our metabolism, which can affect our ability to lose weight and maintain, maintain any weight loss. And so um, I think in terms of behavior, the things that can cause patients to regain their weight is if you drink your calories, if you graze throughout the day, and if you crunch in a bunch of crunchy snack foods. It's not generally that you've done things to like really stretch your stomach or stretch your patch out. Um, that's not really what's happening. It's just that patients can learn to eat through their bypass or eat through their sleeve. And what I mean is, is you're um, reaching for more slider foods. I think I've done um, a video or two about slider foods. And what do I mean by slider foods? They're gonna be um, items that are softer or crunchier, um, not as dense. And if you're eating foods like that, you're gonna be able to eat a much bigger volume of those as opposed to something that is drier or denser. Um, and so if you're having issues with feelings of restriction or lack thereof, really look to see what are the types of foods that you're eating because the type can have also a big impact on the volume of that food that you can eat. Um, and so I certainly think being mindful of your diet, you really need to be looking at your weight for what it is. If you're, if you're coming to see me, then that means that you have the disease of obesity, okay? You have to have that mind shift and we have to approach it from several different ways, okay? Um, and it's also, whenever I say that, it's you need to be looking at obesity as a chronic disease. Once you lose all your weight, you need to know that this is something that you're gonna need to be mindful of and working at for the rest of your life.
It is not a one and done. It's not a magic bullet. That's what I mean by that. So you're always going to have to be mindful of your food choices. You're always going to have to be mindful of your portion size because once you lose all your weight and the years progress, all the inflammation that was in your stomach wall initially, which gave you a lot of strong um, restriction, that all is going to have been dissolved. Your body will have healed up and you're not going to have as much of that rigidity, which is why you have more expansion to your stomach after surgery. The other thing is that your appetite will go back to more normal levels, what you had preoperatively. That is why so much whenever we see you in the postoperative period that we want you to start to develop those good habits so that it's just a habit, it's a way of life, so that you're reincorporating these new, um, this new process into your life. It's not just like, okay, for the next six weeks, I need to make sure I'm taking my vitamins every day because there is a finite goal. There is no goal. There is no end, there's no finish line. The finish, the finish line is when you're um, in the ground, okay? And so I want you to know that this is something that you'll always need to be mindful of. And so I think whenever you, if you're considering revision surgery or if you've never had surgery before and you're just considering it for the first time and you have reservations because you've seen patients that have failed, I hope that this has helped you to see that there are a variety of reasons why things can go horribly awry um, and why things people might not have as ideal of an outcome as you want. But you need to know that everybody is individual. Everybody is, has a different journey. And the reality is, is that surgery can, for the majority of patients, well over 80% of patients, they're going to have good outcomes. And um, we have a lot of really good procedures um, that we can do for patients. So I think um, doing your research and trying to select what is best for you, what you feel most comfortable with, depending on your past medical history, your past surgical history, um, that will really help you um, in this journey. So don't be scared. It's going to be okay. You'll have a good surgeon that will see you through it. Um, keep up with your good follow-up. And hey, all you had to lose is weight. That's what I say. So I hope that this has helped. Uh, please share this um, with any friends or any family if they're considering weight loss surgery and they're just not sure. Okay, hope this helped. Bye-bye.